Bloxham in the 69, which is normally the car that we've seen the uh, this man in second spot, Hugo Simpson, pilot on a few occasions this year. And then the man in 10th place is going to be Will Longmore in the number 184. Looking forward to this then as they line up on the grid. First race of the day, 10 laps for the XLs. We got nine in the books yesterday before an incident for car number eight. Uh, Ryan Phillips made contact with uh, Textile McCoy down at uh, number two and ended up in the uh, concrete wall. Did uh, Ryan Phillips, but there's a, a tie barrier there now, so that shouldn't be an issue if somebody does end up off the road at turn number two. So we're hoping for 10 green laps here this morning. A little bit of extra protection down at that part of the circuit. Actually, not a bad idea to pop that in there. So for Triple Eight Home Loans and for Trick Trailers, this is race number two for the weekend of the XLs. Just marshalling the last few cars around the corner. You can't see them just beyond the the green grass that is the infield horse racing circuit here. There we go. The uh, the five-second board goes out, and we're under starter's orders for race two. And off we go. And a very tardy start. Just missed the jump slightly for Ethan Griggle. The better start going to Hugo Simpson in the 117. So that late arrival into the marshalling area this morning hasn't uh, affected his concentration levels. He got the jump, and he's got the lead going into turn one. Going to have to take the defensive line here though, just to keep the triple seven of Grig Gult at bay, but he runs wide at turn number one and surrenders the lead. Or oh, got a kick of oversteer in this contact going into turn number two with car number 61. That's James and he's had to take to the grass. So our series leader, although he made the initial start oh, around, there goes, goes James. James. So he got some contact from somebody behind there as well. Just couldn't quite see who it was that was tucked in behind him. He's going to drop all the way to the back. And one of the faster guys that was up the pointy end of the field yesterday now is going to have to traverse the field as quickly as he can. Fortunately for him, he's got the 10 laps to do it. How far can he get? Indeed, we had two of our three, or two of the top three finishes yesterday already having issues, although Simpson already looking to make progress. Not sure exactly where he's dropped to, but it looks around well, the back end of the 10. Brad Verrecker across the back of the turn seven, uh, curbing there as he tries to keep Will Longmore alongside, but uh, Simpson's got him covered. And all oh, some more contact a bit further down. That is Cadell Ambrose down at Danny Nong Road going a little bit slowly. Had to grab another gear and uh, get going again. A little bit of a concertina effect, I guess, with a few cars checking up, maybe to avoid some others, and somebody was going to eventually find the back of somebody else by the looks of things. Absolutely, when you got this many XLs going into Dandenong Road for the first time, contact is almost inevitable, and there's some damage. Can't quite see. Uh, car number 50, that's Bradley Vaughan. So it he's is. got damage. He finished in the top five yesterday. He's also, like Hugo Simpson and like James, dropped down in the opening lap of this affair. Wondering if he's the one that possibly may have made contact with uh, with the number 61 of Bradley James down at turn four that sent James around because it was a bit of a, a weird spin. Oh, there goes Chris Steelo. He was having a bit of a, uh, a moment with Cadell Ambrose through turn number one there as well in the New Line Homes, number one, two, two. Cracking save. Absolutely cracking save. And some more contact. And that is the 29 machine going around belonging to Jet Bloomerus. And going to have to traverse the grass, go the other way around. And there he goes, back onto the circuit. As we head down the, uh, the back straight once again, car number 39 and car number 84, the battles up and down the field, but this one now for third. Uh, two people that weren't inside the top five yesterday, but they were right there now. So Lodge uh, up to P3 and Waghorn just behind. And Simpson pulls the trigger on Brad Verecker down at turn nine. So that looks to be his fa favoured passing spot for the moment. And another car around in the back, because struggling to see everyone coming to, uh, to some to grips very early on. It was a very different affair compared to yesterday where the sun was shining, track temperature was up, air temperature was up. It's all gone the opposite way this morning. The air temp definitely not there and obviously the track temp going the uh, the wrong direction as well, going south, not going north in terms of going up. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think it's just cold tyres on such a cold track this morning. They uh, haven't raced 
in conditions like this. They did qualify uh, in in cold conditions yesterday morning, but the sun was out, the UV was on the track, so very different conditions for these guys this morning. Have a look at Simpson, very authoritative, very clean, very committed up the inside of the number 39 going there into turn number two. It sets his sights on the back of Toby Waghorn. That'll be a little bit more of a challenge. Replay coming up here of what happened at turns one, two, three, and four. So it was Bradley James with a little bit of contact there. And who was the car behind that sent James? Well, actually, it looks like it might have been Toby Waghorn, actually, that was in there. And there's, because there's Bradley Vaughan a bit further back in the field. So he had a bit of contact all on his own. That bumper's coming off that car as well. It's starting to smoke a bit further back in the field. Another position there for Simpson. That's, uh, yeah, he's continuing to recover. So that's now right up the uh, point here. And once again, so he's recovered nicely. I'm trying to look at where James is. Uh, 20 second, 20 second. So he's also recovering really nicely. Yeah, as I was saying, that uh, bumper coming off the number 50 of uh, Br uh, Bradley Vaughan is uh, starting to come apart at a great rate and they have shown the uh, the mechanical black flag commonly known as the meatball flag there it is you can just see it on the tower there the uh, the black flag with the uh, orange disc in the middle means you are obliged to come into the pit lane and fix that issue so once again like he did yesterday Grigolt has put his head down he's setting fastest laps consecutively trying to bolt and uh, make his way uh, clear away from the field. Uh, he's got a two second margin at the moment over Tompkins with Simpson now up to third but four seconds further back as we see a bit of a battle on here between Lodge and Bloxham and uh, Will Longmore tagging along for the thing as well. He's going to take advantage of the door that just got opened as well. That's very very smart driving. The number 69 was very very wide through turn three and the invitation was there. He just said thank you very much. Coming back to your point, just about the race leader at the moment, remarkable lap times yesterday. I think all of his laps outside of the very first lap off the grid were within about four tenths of each other, which is absolutely phenomenal consistency. Let's have a look down here at turn four. So there's the spin for William Seal in the 995, all on his own. Ambrose actually did a fairly good job to avoid that car. Ambrose has been in the thick of the action early in this one, hasn't he? He was nearly involved in an accident at Turn 1, and <laughs> he's certainly uh, done well to avoid the drama thus far. Here comes Bradley James in the 61, recovering through the field on the back of the car. We just saw the replay having the spin a couple of laps ago at this part of the circuit. So Seal in the global self-storage machine being pursued by Bradley James. So he's got himself back up to 20th, make that... Uh, 19th. He'll go the long way around at turns 11 and 12 here. Gets that job done. That now exposes Seal to William Sala behind and uh, another car that was coming along for the ride as well. Now the number 50 of Bradley Vaughan, I'd imagine has seen that flag but uh, he's uh, had it out again for him. He's gone through and has not been into the lane to rectify that damage. Interesting. Um, that's the second time through now, so he'll have to come in uh, this lap, I'd have thought, or next lap at the very, very latest. As oh, we see seal, seal wide, so had the moment at Dandenong Road. He's now run wide at turn number one. He's lost at least three positions there. He'll get monstered here, I think, by the uh, the number 157 of uh, Jet Bloomerus up the inside. And then oh, we're going to go three wide here into turn four. And Steelo, very opportunistic, grabs the pair of them. Yeah, that was an interesting, uh, interesting encounter there, but good heads up driving from all three. Though. Oh, we've got a car into the wall at the back of shot there as well. Just That's up at uh, turn three, the number 25. Uh, where's that one on our list there? Christopher he, Steele. No, no, he's actually a bit further up. I couldn't actually see what, it's actually not even on our list of what car it was. Maybe it might be 35 if that's the case. No, that's William Saler in the red machine. But there was a car in the back of shot just all on its own into the tyre barrier at turn three, just completely messed up the opening chicane. Yeah, so we're halfway through the race now. Once again, Griegel uh, with the fastest lap. So that margin now at to 3.9 seconds. He's uh, certainly got the margin uh, quite extensive. As we see windscreen wipers on the pit straight. Is it beginning to spit of rain? I can't see anything at the moment. So if it is, it's very, very light and maybe just clearing the, uh, the windscreen just from a safety measure point of view, just from a, a driver confidence point of view, I think as well. 
something that you don't want those sort of distractions going on. Very wide, almost out of control, almost scraped the fence for James Lodge on that curb on the outside at turn three as he's very much in pursuit. I've just seen Vaughan's come into the lane to uh, fix that uh, yeah, the front panel. What are the uh, mechanics doing? They might just rip that corner off and send him back out there. Oh no, they're getting the tape out, so he should be back out and at least he'll get some points. Yeah, he might be a lap down in the uh, final classification, but at least he'll get out there and he'll have to do all his hard work from the back. He has sunk pretty much to the last spot uh, on the road at the moment. So keep a look on Cadell Ambrose in the 137 and uh, he's chasing the 99 of James K. You just spotted there was a little bit of something lying on the road out the back there around turn six and seven. I'm not quite sure what it was. There, there it is. is. No, I can't. Is that... That's a piece of the bumper, I think, possibly of the Brad Vaughan yeah, machine I... maybe on the racing line too. That's not in a really ideal spot when you're coming around turn six looking for your apex for turn seven and you've got that in the middle of the road. Great switcheroo here for Cadell Ambrose up and over and under, went the long way around and put himself in a good spot to take away what is uh, position number, actually where is that? 12. Where position, position number 12. 12, there he is. So he's up to, moves himself up one spot. Progressed nicely through the field after a little bit of a lacklustre first race. I'm still trying to rack my brains about where I've seen that car before in whose hands. So I'll have to go down after the race is over and have a chat and see if uh, they can give me a little bit of a history lesson about the origins of where that car came from. Uh, you can't say that you can't come away from this weekend and go, oh, it was a bit of a bit of a boring weekend. As we see a few raindrops there on the camera lens. So there are drops of rain around the circuit. We're getting we some reports that it's uh, turn four, there's a couple of spits of rain and on the main straight, there's a couple of spits of rain. It's not it's not heavy enough, I guess, to really worry anybody, but probably just enough to be a distraction at the minute and put a little bit of doubt into people's minds about how this race is going to finish. I was going to say, it's clearly not, did, you know, slowing the cars down too much. I mean, what is that? That's, uh, Number that's of nine of the setting. top ten yeah. setting personal bests on the last lap. And once again, Grigot with his fastest lap of the race so that margin now at 5.8 seconds out front he's mastered the conditions very very well this morning i mean yesterday as we said he had those really good uh banker laps that were all within about four tenths of each other and he's doing the same thing again here this morning uh all the lap times again very very close to what they were yesterday not the record setting pace that he set yesterday still about two uh tenths or so away from that pace but they've, they've done their homework. They've worked out what they need to do tyre pressure-wise or setup change-wise this morning to get that car tuned, and he's gone. He, he's checked out. So all the battling behind is really of interest to us. Will Longmore was uh, got a little bit too close for comfort there with Lockie Bloxham and rode up over the right rear of the car, and I think that car's got broken steering. Yeah, clipped, clipped the uh, left rear, and yeah. absolutely, you can see, trying to keep it in just a straight line down the back straight, yeah, definite damage upon landing, or sorry, upon contact. You could see in the air the one wheel was not quite in line with the other wheel. Have a look at the replay, so he tried just to, to place his car on the outside, but just misjudged it. And that was an awkward bit of contact, but he is continuing, but definitely steering damage for sure. Yep. Or oh, we see him slide around the top corner. He might just have to bring it back a peg or two and just bring it home now with just over two laps to go. Yeah, he's just got to play the safe game here. Just make sure you can bring the car home straight. There's no point trying to risk it. If you uh, got some drivers behind you, just you know, play the common sense argument. Let them through if they're not in your fight and just live to fight another day for him it'll be for race three a bit later on this afternoon uh Griegel, you were saying about the uh, lap record he broke yesterday is now just three hundredths of a second <laughs> off that lap record he broke yesterday so very much oh, repeating oh have we got the uh is that the 93 it is the 93 as he heads into Dandenong, it's bell the orion bell off at Dandenong road Lucky to keep that off the wall, but that's why the uh, the tarmac's been placed out there to avoid incidents like we've seen in particularly supercars the likes of Todd Hazelwood, Lee Holdsworth, and, and Will Davison, who had massive accidents there over the course of several years. So that area of track has been has been tarmacked, although the grass is still further down the road into Dandenong Road. 
yeah, it's amazing with the number of the uh, the incidents that used to take place at that sort of turn six seven complex. They've all sort of shifted a little bit further down towards turns eight and nine Correct. now. Um, it, it's a bit of ironic just considering how they've actually taken one incident away or one incident hotspot away, and then everyone's focus has sort of shifted. You know, okay, what what can I do next? And that's where all the accidents have now started to happen, just a few hundred meters a bit further down the track. I think it might be quite hard to uh, tarmac down there, though. I think gravel no, traps so. certainly still necessary down the road. These two have been engaged in a, a good battle for the last uh, couple of laps. I was, uh, I think that that might be the end of that battle with uh, James K going over the back end of turn seven through that tarmac area we were just talking about. But, uh, Ambrose and K have routinely engaged in several changes of position over the last few laps since we last saw them uh, and they're still at it again here when we're now on the last lap so can Ambrose hold off K or can K grab that spot back they are still arguing well actually they're arguing over yeah 12th and 13th there are still battle packs up and down the field uh, Longmore is still holding on to 8th at this point in time holding off Techstar McCoy we saw him uh, clipped the rear end of uh, blocks from a couple of laps ago, so he's still he's still keeping it on the road and keeping it in a nice top ten position. Here's your race leader coming up the hill into turn six. He's he's actually buttoned it off a little bit. The last lap time around for him was a 34.9 relative to all the 32s that he's been doing over the earlier parts of the race. So I think he knows he's got com a comfortable enough margin to get home here, and he doesn't need to risk the car. The real interest is going, what's going on behind. Here's your State Series points leader in Hugo Simpson. Now, is he passing a car for position? No, that's a car, for, that's a lap down. So he's marched his way back up to third place after that drama that he had earlier in the race. But here comes your race leader and the winner of race two. Two for two for Ethan Griggult. Is anybody gonna have anything for him later this afternoon? Oh, the way, the way it's been so far, I find that unlikely. But you never know in Circuit XL racing, and that's why uh, that's why we enjoy it so much. As we see, uh, Tompkins come across the line in position number two from Simpson in third, and timing is going a little bit weird. There we are. It's and just it, come back now. And actually, in fact, Griggle buttoned it off in the, on the ninth lap, and on lap ten, he's actually gone and broken his track record from yesterday by a full three tenths of a second. So he's really in fine form this weekend. Really in tune with the car. And uh, I'd be interested to see what he can do a bit later this afternoon if it stays dry. Could see him into the 31s. But a one minute 32.13 is uh, the fastest we've seen around here for quite some time. And I know they've, been, they've done a lot of changes with the XLs this year with the control suspension and a number of other things that were changed uh, over the course from last year to this year. And they've really found out how to hit the sweet spot with that 777 uh, AMR and uh, ERT motorsport machine. Certainly have, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's second in the championship at this point in time. Had a, a good first race here uh, in the opening round, but there was there was uh, an incident that he was involved in in race number two, so didn't score too many points. So he's been playing catch-up since then. As you see, a replay of an incident on the final lap. Oh, we've got uh, Troy Jeffs and Carly Fleming there. A little bit of contact. Something went flying. Might have been just a, a small piece of the bodywork. Actually, speaking of bodywork, there's the race tape you were talking about on the Brad Vaughan machine in uh, car number 50. And he was right down the, uh, the bottom end of the order, I think. Yeah, he was the last classified car home in 31st place.